and out the back here at the stern they have another pool near the spa area the spa is kind of surrounding the pool here and uh, a lot of people are sheltered from the wind here they also have a, a bar here and a hot tub Say bye bye to Canada. Looks to me as if those Alaskan cruise passengers stayed out in the cold too long. Ah. Uh -huh. Must be some more tourists from Florida. They're even more well wrapped up than I am. Well, they're not going to get sick this week, that's for sure. On either side of us, land is kind of petering out now, so I guess we're going out more into the kind of open ocean seas rather than a channel. Because just a few minutes ago, the boat started rocking from side to side, <laughs> which it hasn't done. It's gone sort of... Uh, a few jiggles but like it really a couple of minutes ago it really started to go you know hard over left hard over right if you see what I mean definitely starting to rock now I came back down to the cabin and looked out the window and over on the starboard side because we we're on the starboard it's under ship. Don't know what it is. It looks like some kind of a ferry boat, maybe. Or maybe it's a cruise ship. I know we were supposed to be getting close to the Volendam, but I don't think that looks big enough for the Volendam. Maybe when I get back to the. Does that say Holland America Line? I wonder. Maybe Dan and Debbie are on that ship. Maybe I'll get the binoculars out and see if I can figure it out. Well, well whatever ship that was, um, passed us about 11, 10, 11, 15. Um, and uh, about 10 minutes later, it's really, really gone. I came up back on deck because um, our maid came to make the room up. And you can see it's pretty far off now after like 10-15 minutes. It's about 11.30 now. We just got up. Well, we're sort of in the process of waking up, I think. And, and uh, there's a nice little sunrise over um, this inlet here. Cruising up to catch you can. And according to Kathy, this is her first glacier that she's seeing on this trip. Um, don't quite think that she's got her glasses on yet. We'll give her the benefit of the doubt till later on. So this is like looking looking back where we just came from. Look at that sunrise again. And here's a little cutie. It's a bad sign that there's sunrise because that means it's like about 5.30 in the morning. And um, she's been. Really for me. She was doing magic mushrooms last night, so <laughs> that's her excuse. Yeah, no, she was she was gambling and losing money last night. Oh. Oh look, there's a little Alaskan boat. Looks pretty old. I'm not sure if it's like a. I guess it must be some kind of a passenger vessel. Oh, it's actually 4.30 in the morning. I just woke, woke Kathy up. She was really thrilled with that. Um, 4.30 Alaskan time, 5.30 Pacific time. And the, and the sun did rise at 4.21, so we just got like uh, 10 minutes after sunrise. And I was wrong yesterday. Uh, we just, uh, we didn't cross into US. We're going to cross into US this morning. We just uh, lost the British Columbia pilots. Um, yesterday morning. We'll pick up uh, another pilot this morning. Oh, we, we still get protection even in Alaska. Wow, he was going fast. 
That was the Coast Guard hand. I guess there aren't too many other boats sailing around right now. And I'm in my underwear, so I hope they're not looking at us with uh, zoom lenses. So this is a channel coming into Ketchikan in Alaska. He just wanted to get in front of us so he could actually literally guide us. Now he's slowed down a bit. He's just matching us. I was just saying to Kathy, this is a view we don't get every morning. And that's from our starboard window. And of course they have a bridge camera as well, which actually actually they show on the internet um, every minute or so. And uh, so here's uh, the bridge camera now, uh, coming up into Ketchikan. Kathy said, show them the bridge cam. So there you go, honey. So from Ketchikan, you can get a lot of seaplane trips that go to Misty Fjords, which is actually what Kathy saw this morning. <laughs> Not glaciers, but Misty Fjords. Just cruising along here. It looks like it's going to be a nice day. There it is. There's the float plane. Now he's only got one. But I guess some of the people from this boat are going to be going on it. We're going to be going on, the, on our plane when we go to uh, Juneau and fly over the glaciers. I can't believe it. Kathy's gone back to sleep again. She's snoring. She's missing the big ship. Cutter 167, US Coast Guard. Making sure that we get secure while we're in Alaska. So little Kathy said, "Why don't we just get up on desk, uh, get dressed, and go up on deck?" Well, it's just because basically we're about two minutes away from uh, from docking in Ketchikan now. That look, that looks to be the uh, the town. That's it, basically, over there. So Creek Street is somewhere on the right, I guess. Well, that was an easy morning's work, wasn't it? Bye-bye. Look, Hud, he's actually got like a heavy machine gun on the front. Makes you feel real safe, doesn't it? Must be getting warm, he's just taking his hat off. Good job. Will you take your damn hand off that trigger? It's that gun's pointing in my direction, thank you. Yeah, you can just hear the maneuvering thrust is kicking in now. We're just going by their little little har uh, harbour here. They got quite a few boats, and we're going to pull alongside the pier here now in a few minutes. It definitely looks pretty Alaskan, huh? These buildings are kind of like rustic. Well, I'm sorry, this morning I did wake Kathy up. I didn't follow the instructions. Oh, and there is actually snow on those hilltops up there. Because this is Alaska. Yeah, there's some cute little houses over there. The other side of the marina. So here we are, 
We've actually got about an hour and a half before the uh, town tour begins on the dockside. So we're actually going to go off the boat and just go uh, looking around and maybe we'll go to Creek Street. Yeah, we're only two minutes off the ship but Kathy was already going into withdrawal. So here we go, she's just going to get on this. Uh, just kidding. Get her Walmart fix. <laughs> so Dave has actually let me have the video camera and we've just gotten off the ship now in Ketchikan and we're in downtown Ketchikan and looking down the street and then another cruise ship has also come in and here's Dave we're quite lucky because the weather's good and Dave's showing us where our room is and where is it there? Where our room is the room just above Dave's head, right here. And it's the third one from the left, slightly facing down. Luckily, they face down, and it, we can really see the ocean very well. Okay, here she is. Well, we're near Creek Street now, and there's a really large totem pole here. With some kind of a eagle or bird sculptured on top. So yeah, we're just going to wander up to a creek street with those uh, cute buildings along the along the creek. Okay, Han, let's go. There's a plaque in front of the totem pole that Dave uh, showed me standing in front of, and it gives a little history of the totem pole and why they're made. And even Ketchikan has its own motorcycle brigade. And I'm sure this will be one of many totem poles that we see. Interestingly, this totem pole, and interestingly, this uh, totem pole is right on the corner of Totem Way. So every visit to Ketchikan has to have the honey underneath the Creek Street sign on the way up to Creek Street, which is a street over a creek. And as you can see, when the traffic stops for me, you can actually hear the sound of the running creek. <laughs> Who are you calling, Han? You calling Debbie? No, I just don't time to this. Oh, OK. Our bus? Not till 9.20. And we, you see, Creek Street's not really that far from the cruise ships. Because that's our ship over there. One of the places in Creek Street is a, uh, a brothel. Now they've turned into a little museum called Dolly's House. And uh, later on, when we go on the uh, deluxe Ketchikan tour, we're actually going to be taking a little tour around that house. But Kathy didn't go into the hoe house, she went into the jewelry store, which is one of the places that's along here on Creek Street. 21 Creek Street. There's a little dog up there somewhere, or a big dog. You see, it's much better here, you're much better in the sun. And according to Kathy, you can't see the water coming down here. So I don't know what that is. Still here.
likes to sit right there. U.S. Coast Guard to protect this ball decline. Looks like it. Well, usually when you have um, like animals on there, there are they are a part of the particular clan. For instance, this is a beaver clan house. You can tell a beaver clan house because on the bottom it'll have the, the shape of a beaver flapping. The particular pole that you see right in the front, that is um, Chief Abbott's pole. It represents him, and that's why there's a shield on the front of it. On the very top, there is a bear. Whenever you see something on the top of a totem pole that sits right in front of the clan house, that means that particular clan came from the bear clan. Now, the, the pictures or the items that are below that represent that that clan can also be a part of the other clans. Now there's the ravens and there's the eagles. Sold uh, Alaska to the United States. Now he is up there, was up there in honor, now he is up there in dishonor. <laughs> they honored him for that, but then they dishonored him. There you go. So these ones are definitely posing for us. Kathy's <laughs> getting some shots as well. So this is the salmon hatchery. These are, I guess, a year or two old, aren't they? These are pretty big. And they have these huge tanks back here. These are the salmon at seven days. 14 days, a month, several weeks, several months, and, and maybe get on for a year or, a year or so. Well, they'll pull up and then climb up our ladders into our holding tank. So these are rainbow trails. We'll wipe your person now, we'll wipe it in. On the average, we wipe in 70 king salmon, 35 males, and 35 females to harvest over 175,000 eggs and hopes to have 100,000 smoke for future release. What is it? What is it? Just beef and stuff. Yeah, just, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go to the next one. Yeah, that's tea. 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 Now we know that Sunny is a female because of her size and weight. She weighs approximately three and a half pounds and the male great horned owl only weighs two pounds. She was injured about a year ago, just over a year ago, and she's a victim <coughs> of a motor vehicle accident. I'm not guilty for giving him that original name. <laughs> and red-tailed hawks are fairly common hawk in the United States. In fact, they occur from up here in central Alaska all the way down to Panama. Now, although they are classed as a migratory bird, they don't really migrate in the true sense that, um, for example, like the snow goose or a whooping crane, <coughs> but they do make localized movements depending on food availability. For example, if there's a lot of food throughout the winter, they don't need to move. Whereas our red-tailed hawks here in Alaska, in a really hard winter, would have to move a little south down into Canada and even as far as Washington in a really hard winter. Feeding hey. time for the, for the feeding time for the trail. <laughs> At the bottom, though, does it? I'm sorry, that doesn't have any effect on them. 
I just saw one of the early salmon that's coming upstream now, so that should be pretty exciting. They're supposed to be starting to come upstream in about two weeks. And uh, up this stream here, and how big was he? It was about two feet, it was a big one. Yeah, let's see if I can catch one. <laughs> and now we're gonna go in here, I guess, and see some totem poles and how they make them and stuff like that. Another day, another buffet. <laughs> we ran back to get lunch today. Well, th th this is open 24 hours, so there was no. This buffet is open 24 hours, so there was no chance of us actually missing. But everybody else was running back to get buffet too. Yeah. So there was going to be a thing left. We thought we were going to get a pizza, but unfortunately, 2,000 other people decided the same thing, I think. <laughs> the ones that aren't in here, anyway. So we found out that uh, actually, that those hilltops up there with the snow and ice. Uh, that one up there is called what, Deer Mountain. Yeah, and down the, the down the hill here were you know the trees. We we'd seen the uh, eagles and the salmon just behind those houses over there. And at the front here, there's another there's another store that's called Deer Diamond Store. That's actually one that Kathy didn't go in. <laughs> I mean, she didn't have time. Yeah. And we're going to be selling in about, oh, I guess, like a few minutes, I guess. So that's Dolly's house, the brothel, that we went last on the deluxe tour. And on the way out, you could actually sign the, the guest book. So we signed Dan and Debbie. <laughs> okay. And I think we're just beginning to move now, aren't we? We're just uh, moving away from the side, I think. Soon we'll be steaming towards Juno. Wow, this other ship next to us is huge. It just goes on forever and ever. Well, not quite. Anyway, it's about the same size as our ship. Um, but there's another one that's uh, in port, and um, they don't have a space at the uh, at the dock side, so they're having to use these tenders to uh, take them out. So maybe we'll get to see that in a minute as we. Uh, as we get away from the dockside. Yeah, actually this is the uh, Celebrity Infinity. I think the Celebrity, uh, their rooms are about three times the cost of ours. But they do have a lot of rooms with balconies. But they're definitely more uh, uh, of an expensive cruise line. And it really is a pretty big ship. About the same size as ours, of course. Wave goodbye to Catchy Can, honey. That's your cue. Well, there's quite a few float planes out there. I think there must be about six or seven. Maybe more. That's right, Kathy has just said that, like, yeah, there's loads of float planes. In fact, past the church here. Um, there's another float plane dock. And then over the corner here, we have the other ship. 
Yeah, Kathy says this is another celebrity one. This is uh, the Mercury. <laughs> and this is the one that, of course, uh, didn't have any uh, spare dock space for, so this is where the tenders were going to uh, really, you know, extend your embarkation, debarkation by quite a lot. So the rich people end up having to spend more time getting on and off the ship. Huh. Now, I was incorrect. Celebrities, as another medium price line like ours, it's Crystal Cruises is the ones where the cabins are three times as expensive. And their ships are usually, you know, a bit more luxurious. Right now, you won't believe it, but Kathy's actually trying to um, find out where the Walmart is. Just in case she ever comes back this way again. She needs to dash in for some toiletries. Mm -hmm.